The IKEA Kitchen Planner is a great tool and these five tips are gonna help you get the most out of it. Tip number one is to register an account. Registering is very simple, here's all you have to do. Go to kitchenplanner.ikea.com. I'll put a link to that in the description below. Go to create a profile or log in, create account, go through all of this stuff here, which is very simple. You don't have to sign up for their emails and anything like that. I don't, and I don't get any emails from Ikea. It's really great. They don't bother me with spam at all, which I really appreciate. Click continue, you get an email verification and you're set up, you're good to go. It only takes a few minutes, it's very simple. Yes, you can design a kitchen without doing this, but here's the benefit to registering a username. It allows you to save the project that you're working on. Instead of going through the time to design your kitchen only to end up maybe having to leave or your computer crashes or something else comes up that you have to leave that computer, you'll lose that design. And if it's not saved, you can't go back and edit it later. And once your project is saved, it's in their system for 365 days. Placing cabinets is the whole point of the IKEA kitchen planner. You want to put cabinets on the floor plan and design your kitchen. Here's a trick to making this work right for you. When you're dragging the cabinet and you see that green highlighted area, if you hold the cabinet in place, until that green highlight goes away and you let the cabinet go, it'll stay where you place it. Down here on the bottom, there's a move and rotate in confined space icon. If I select that, I'm now able to take this cabinet and rotate it 90 degrees. I can easily move it over next to this cabinet, wait for the highlight to go away, and let it go. Doing this little step will help you to move cabinets exactly where you want them. Even if the planner is trying to tell you, no, we want to put this somewhere else, you can override that using this little trick. Elevation view is a great way to work when designing a kitchen. And you can do it like this in the IKEA kitchen planner. Hit this half circle arrow, which is switch top slash front, brings up this 2D image of the wall you're working on with a grid overlaid on it, which can be very useful. These features here are locked when you are in 3D line view or 3D dimensional view. The navigation of these particular views is a little bit different. When I switch to the 2D elevation view, I now can pan left or right. I can zoom in exactly on the cabinet that I'm looking for, and I can really get detailed with my design. To get out of this view, you just select that again. It goes back to your overhead floor plan. And of course you have these other 3D elements that you can select. All right, so I'm happy with this wall. I wanna look at my sink wall. I can say orbit to the left or to the right and basically it turns my design so I can see this wall now and how it will look. I love designing kitchens in both floor plan view and elevation view as it helps me see it in two different ways. You may wanna add crown molding and light rail to your design and there's an easy way to do this. When you place a wall cabinet on the IKEA planner, you have some options on the side menu for that cabinet. You have cornice, and deco strip. The cornice is your crown molding and the deco strip is your light valance. To save you time afterwards by manually going in and selecting this for each wall cabinet, once you do it to the first cabinet, every cabinet afterwards will also have the same settings. So I will add my cornice and my deco strip to this cabinet on the plan. And you can see this cabinet has my crown molding, my top molding, and my light valance. Now I'm gonna add a new cabinet next to it, and ta-da, it already has those items pre-installed on the cabinet. Very simple, it saves you lots of time, easy to do. Changing handle positions on a door is pretty important. Just select the cabinet that you wanna change the handle position on, and you're gonna to go to your side menu under Customize. Depending on the cabinet you're selecting, you'll have a few different options, but since this is just a single door wall cabinet, we just have one option for the door. So I'll select the door, I can change the door style, I can change the push opener, I can change the handles, and I can change the handle position of that door. I'll hit Change, and it gives me these options. Center, left horizontal, left vertical, and on and on. Well, I want a left vertical handle so that it matches this handle, opens up to the right the way I want it to. Very simple to do, now you know. All right, one bonus tip for you when you're dealing with appliances. Under the Appliances tab, you can see all the list of appliances that you can use with IKEA, but maybe I have a 36 inch gas range, not a standard 30. How do I go about putting that in the floor plan? It's quite easy. We go down to Existing Appliances. Once we select Existing Appliances, we get this menu, down below and I want to use a resizable range. So it gives you basically a placeholder that you can change the size of on your floor plan. You can select its height, its width, we're going to make it 36 inches because we want it larger, its depth is fine, we can hit apply and now you have this placeholder appliance for your floor plan so that you can design your kitchen around that knowing that you have the right appliance sizes in the places where they need to be. Mark, can't you just do this for me? 
Yes, I can do this for you. Check the link in the description below for my online kitchen design solution. Knowing how to use the IKEA kitchen planner is only half the battle. You also have to know how to design a kitchen. I have lots of videos that can help you with that, but this particular one is really gonna help you start off on the right foot.